good day ladies and gentlemen this is dr frere your professor hello class good morning our discussion today is on marriage as provided in the family code but first we have to define marriage so what is marriage the new family code of the philippines which was uh, effective since august 3 1998 defines marriage as a special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman who entered into in accordance with law for the establishment of conjugal and family life so class please be reminded that uh, marriage, the purpose of marriage is to establish a conjugal and family life. However, there are other definitions of marriage, such that of Light and Keller in 1985, that defines marriage as a socially recognized union between two or more individuals that typically involve sexual and economic rights and duties. They further uh, elucidated their view of marriage as a business partnership as much as a romantic fairy tale that involves compromises, division of labor, specialization, financial arrangement, and communication systems. So whatever their definitions may be class, uh, I also guess that you have your own definition of marriage too. So there are two aspects of marriage. First is the legal point of view of marriage that argues that marriage is a contract. And the second is that of the religious point of view that argues that marriage is a sacrament. So in this case class, in our discussion, it is more with the first aspect of marriage that we are going to elaborate here. So as uh, uh, written in Matthew 19 verse 6, Therefore that God has joined together, let not man separate. This particularly pertains on uh, marriage. So I guess class, it is also... Uh, right to ask uh, the question why people marry there might be several reasons why people have to enter marriage and i know you have your own uh, reasons also so let's just take few of these reasons i have included here uh, 20 reasons and maybe i will just enumerate this for your convenience now other people marry because of love or maybe because of some economic security or emotional security or it might be because uh, their parents have wishes no, for their kids to be married or it might be because they want to escape from uh, loneliness no? or it's due to a common interest for both parties or because they want to take parenthood or maybe because uh, uh, they are uh, physically attracted to each other or it's because they are compatible not to marry or some is because of what they call the mar marital bliss and happiness that marriage will bring or others is might be due to some unhappy home situation or experiences that uh, they decided to to marry or others might be because of money or some financial security or others marry also due to companionship that they can seek from the other or it might be due to protection or for others it might be just an adventure a new phase in their lives or others might be due to some sex or sexual attraction that uh, the other is uh, eliminating no? or it's because they want to beget and rear of children no? 
those are also reasons or it's because they want to accept some responsibilities because class you know marriage really goes with it a, a great responsibility or because of the death of a par former spouse that the, the other spouse want to marry or uh, it may be due to care and nurturance of happiness that uh, people have uh, decided to uh, marry. Now, class, let's move with the uh, Executive Order Number 209, known as the Family Code of the Philippines, on its uh, Title One, Marriage, Chapter One, including the prerequisite of marriage, um, defined its purposes and characteristics. So earlier, uh, I have we have defined already uh, marriage as uh, provided in the Family Code that it is a special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman. So, uh, by this, it is uh, known that marriage is the foundation of the family and it is an inviolable social institution whose nature, uh, consequences, and incidents are governed by law. And it is not subject to stipulation, of course, except that marriage settlement may fix the property relations during the marriage within the limits provided by the code. So now, class, what are the essential requisites of marriage? The law provides that no marriage shall be valid unless these essential requisite requisites are present, such as the legal capacity of uh, the contracting parties, who must be male and female, and the consent freely given no, by the contracting parties in the presence of the solemnizing officer. So when we say legal capacity, at least, uh, the contracting parties are of majority age and that they voluntarily uh, consented the marriage between them to take place. Now class, how about the formal requisites of marriage? One is the authority of the solemnizing officer. So this means that the solemnizing officer is authorized by law to solemnize marriage. Then the second is the valid marriage license, except in cases where uh, it falls under the under chapter two of uh, this book. And the third is um, the marriage ceremony, which has to take place in the appearance of the contracting parties before the solemnizing officer. And of course, uh, their de personal de declaration no, that they take each other uh, as, as husband and wife in the presence of their witnesses, uh, of not less than two witnesses that are of legal age. So, this witnesses class are we called are what we called Nino and Nina. Now, class, you might ask, how about if there is an absence of the essential or the formal requisites of marriage? So, uh, the law explains that a defect in any of the essential requisites shall not affect the validity of the marriage, but the party or parties responsible for the irregularity shall be civilly, or criminally, or administratively liable. So now, what is the minimum age for marriage? So any male or female of the age of 18 years or upwards, not under any of the impediments mentioned in Article 37 and 38 of the Code, may contract marriage so in cases where uh, the contracting parties or any of the contracting parties fail to comply with this minimum age requirement the uh, marriage can may be declared as null or void now how about the marriage ceremony 
so the law provides that there is no prescribed form or religious right for the solemnization of the marriage but it shall be necessary however for the contracting parties to appear personally before the solemnizing officer and declare in the presence of not less than two witnesses of legal aids that they take its other as husband and wife and uh, this declaration shall be contained in the marriage certificate which shall be signed by the contracting parties and their witnesses and of course attested by the solemnizing officer so class member the signatories to the marriage certificate are the contracting parties the witnesses and the solemnizing officer now class in case of a marriage in articulo mortis or where or when the party is at the point of death is unable to sign the marriage certificate then it shall be sufficient for one of the witnesses to the marriage to write the name of said party which fact shall be attested also by the solemnizing officer now next question is who are persons authorized to solemnize marriage so the code answers that marriage may be solemnized by one any incumbent member of the judiciary within the court's jurisdiction and uh, number two any priest rabbi imam or minister of any church or religious sect duly authorized by his church or religious sect and registered with the civil register general acting within the limits of the written authority granted by his church or religious sect and provided that at least one of the contracting parties belongs to the solemnizing officer's church or religious sect third any ship captain or airplane chief only in the case mentioned in article 31 of the code number four any military commander of a unit to which a chaplain is assigned but in the absence of the chaplain during a military operations likewise only in the cases mentioned in article 32 and number five any consul general or consul or vice consul in the case also provided in, an, in article 10, 10 of the code next class is uh, the place of solemnization of marriage so marriage shall be solemnized publicly in the chambers of the judge or in open court in the church chapel or temple or in the office of the consul general or consul or vice consul as the case may be and not elsewhere except in cases of marriages contracted on the point of death or in remote places in accordance with article 29 of this code or where both of the parties request the solemnizing officer officer in writing in which case the marriage may be solemnized at a house or a place designated by them in a sworn statement to that effect this is why class there are marriages that uh, took place in um, hotels or resorts or beaches and similar places now my next question is who will issue the marriage license a marriage license shall be issued by the local civil registrar of the city or municipality where either contracting party habitually resides except in marriages where no license is required in accordance with chapter 2 of this title how about those marriages by consular officials marriages between filipino citizens abroad may be solemnized by a consul general consul or vice consul of the republic of the philippines but the issuance class of the marriage license and the duties of this local civil registrar and of the solemnizing officer with regard to the celebration of marriage shall be performed by said consular official 
no class about with the marriage license application so where a marriage license is required each of the contracting parties shall file separately a sworn application for such license with the proper local civil registrar which shall specify uh, the following such as uh, the full name of the contracting party the place of birth the age and date of birth the civil status and if previously married how when and where the previous marriage was dissolved or annulled next is the present residence and citizenship the degree of relationship of the contracting parties the full name residence and citizenship of the father the full name residence and citizenship of the mother and the full name residence and citizenship of the guardian or the person having charge in case the contracting party has neither father nor mother and is under the age of 21 years the applicants their parents or guardian shall not be required to exhibit the resident certificates in any formality in concern with the securing of the marriage license now what will be the, how the age requirement they determined so the local civil registrar upon receiving the application of marriage shall require the presentation of the original birth certificates or in default thereof the baptism or the baptismal certificates of the contracting parties or copies of such documents duly attested by the persons having custody of the originals so these certificates class or certified copies of the documents uh, need, the, need to be sworn to and shall be exempt from the documentary stamp tax. The signature and offic official title of the person issuing the certificate shall be sufficient proof of its authenticity. No class, if either of the contracting parties is unable no, to produce his birth or baptismal certificate or a certified copy of either because of the destruction or loss of the original or if it is sworn by an affidavit of such party or any other person that such birth or baptismal certificate has not yet been received though the same has been required of the person having custody thereof of at least 15 days prior to the date of the application so such party may furnish in lieu thereof his current residence certificate or an instrument drawn up and sworn to before the local civil register concerned or any public official authorized to administer of. However, class, the presentation of birth or baptismal certificate shall not be required if the parents of the contracting parties appear personally before the local civil register concerned and swear to the correctness of the lawful aids of said parties as stated in the application or when the local civil register shall by merely looking at the applica applicants upon their personally appearing before him he be convinced that either or both of them have the required aids now class how about the documents required if parties were previously married so in case either of the contracting parties have been previously married the applicant shall be required to furnish instead of the birth or baptismal certificate required in the last preceding article the death certificate of the deceased spouse or the judicial decree of the absolute divorce or the judicial decree of annulment or declaration of nullity of his or her previous marriage so in case the death certificate cannot be secured the party shall make an affidavit setting forth the circumstance in his or her actual civil status in the name and the date of death of the deceased spouse.
no class when parental consent is required. In case either or both of the contracting parties not having been emancipated by a previous marriage or between the ages of 18 and 21, they shall, in addition to the requirements of, uh, of the articles mentioned earlier, they have to exhibit to the local civil registrar the consent to their marriage of their father, mother, surviving parent or guardian, or persons having legal charge of them. And such consent shall be manifested in writing by the interested party who personally appears before the proper local civil registrar or in the form of an affidavit made in the presence of two witnesses and attested before any official authorized by law to administer us. The personal manifestation shall be recorded in both applications for marriage license and the affidavit, if one is executed instead, shall be attached to said applications. Next question class is when parental advice is required. So, any contracting party between the age of 21 and 25 shall be obliged to ask their parents or guardian for advice upon the intended marriage. If they do not obtain such advice or if it be unfavorable, the marriage license shall not be issued till after three months following the completion of the publication of the application, therefore. So, a sworn statement by the contracting parties to the effect that such advice has been sought, together with the written advice given, if any, shall be attached to the application for marriage license. Should the parents or guardian refuse to give, to give any advice, this fact shall be stated in the sworn statement. Then class, next is the posting of the notice of marriage license application. So the local civil registrar shall prepare a notice which shall contain the full names and residences of the applicants for marriage license and other data given in the applications. The notice shall be posted for 10 consecutive days on a bulletin board outside the office of the local civil registrar, located in a conspicuous place within the building and accessible to the general public. So this notice shall request all persons having knowledge of any impediment to the marriage to advise the local civil registrar thereof. The marriage license shall be issued after the completion of the period of publication. How about the validity of the marriage license? The license shall be valid in any part of the Philippines for a period of 120 days from the date of issue and shall be deemed automatically cancelled at the expiration of the said period if the contracting parties have not made use of it. So the expiry date shall be stamped in bold characters on the face of every license issued. So class, uh, remember there is an expiration date of the marriage license. It has to be 120 days uh, from the date it was issued. Failure to, to use no, the marriage license within those dates then, or within the no those number of days, it shall be deemed automatically cancelled. Now, how about class in cases of marriage by foreign citizens? So, when either or both of the contracting parties are citizens of a foreign country, it shall be necessary for them before a marriage license can be obtained to submit a certificate of legal capacity to contract marriage issued by the respective diplomatic or consular officials. So, those stateless persons or refugees from other countries shall, in lieu of the certificate of legal capacity herein required, submit no, an affidavit stating the circumstances showing such capacity to contract marriage. So, class, this is also allowed under Article 21 of 
the code. No class, let's talk about the marriage certificate or the contract. So the marriage certificate in which the parties shall declare that they take each other as husband and wife shall also state 1. The full name, sex, and age of its contracting party 2. Their citizenship, religion, and habitual residence 3. The date and precise time of the celebration of the marriage 4. That the proper marriage license has been issued according to law, except in marriage provided for in Chapter 2 of this title. 5. That either or both of the contracting parties have secured the parental consent in appropriate cases, that especially if their age is between 18 or below 25, and that... Uh, either or both of the contracting parties have complied with the legal requirement regarding parental advice in appropriate cases also and that the parties have entered into marriage settlement if any attaching a copy thereof now how about the distribution of the copies of the marriage certificate so, class, it should be the duty of the person solemnizing the marriage to furnish either of the contracting parties the original of the marriage certificate referred to in this article and to send the duplicate and triplicate copies of the certificate not later than 15 days after the marriage to the local civil register of the place where the marriage was solemnized and proper receipt shall be issued by the local civil registrar to the solemnizing officer transmitting copies of the marriage certificate and so class it is really important that the copies of the marriage certificate are being transmitted officially to the local civil registrar in that case, the solemnizing officer shall retain in his file the quadruplicate copy of the marriage certificate, the copy of the, the original of the marriage license, and in proper cases, the affidavit of the contracting party regarding the solemnization of the marriage in place or other than those mentioned in Article 8 of this code. So now, class, next question is, who has the duty to prepare the documents and to administer us? So, as provided in the code, it shall be the duty of the local civil registrar to prepare the documents required by this title or by, by this uh, book no? and to administer us to all interested parties without any charge in both cases. And the documents and affidavits shall filed in connection with the applications for marriage license shall be exempt from a documentary stamp tax. And of course, class, the marriage shall be registered in the registry book. The local civil registrar concerned shall enter all applications for marriage license filed with him in a registry book strictly in the order in which the same are received. He shall record in his in the said book the names of the applicants, the date on which the marriage license was issued, and such other data as may be necessary. Okay, now plus how about marriages by Filipinos outside the Philippines? So all marriages solemnized outside the Philippines in accordance with the laws enforced in the country where they were solemnized invalid there as such shall also be valid in this country except those prohibited under Article 35, Paragraph 1, 4, and 5, and 6, uh, 36, and 7, Articles 36 and 37 and 38, Paragraph 17a so oh, class when a marriage between a filipino citizen and a foreigner is validly celebrated and a divorce is thereafter validly obtained abroad by the alien spouse capacitating him or her to remarry the filipino spouse shall have capacity to remarry under the philippine law 
Okay, so that would be all class for our discussion on this part of the family code and uh, for your activity, create an image of your dream wedding. Discuss the plans that you are going to take based on the provisions of the family code on marriage. Okay, so class, um, please submit your output in the Google Classroom. And uh, thank you for watching this video. See you in our next.